kind of looking for that one mistake. And a drive deep to left. He hit this one well, and it's gone. And this one is over. Oh, there's a shot way back. Forget about it. Gone. A tape measure job from Tim Salmon. Salmon swings, hits it high and deep into left field. This ball has a chance, and it is gone. And the Angels win it 8-6 in the bottom half of the 11th inning. He was a rookie of the year. He is a World Series champ. Tim Salmon's an Angels Hall of Famer and recently went back to campus to his alma mater, Grand Canyon University, to not only look a lot like Kurt Russell, but to talk to the young Lopes about the college season that is ahead. That is a pretty cool alum that shows up to visit with the kids. And speaking of Grand Canyon, the Antelopes are taking on the Trojans of USC live on MLB Network coming up at 8 Eastern this weekend as a part of the Big Desert Invitational College Baseball Kickoff Tournament. Great college baseball live right here on MLB Network. And we are pleased to have Tim Salmon on with us on Hot Stove. Timmy, good morning. Good morning, Maddie. Al, good how morning. are you guys doing? Uh, we're great, man. Hey, uh, tell us about going back to talk to the kids at Grand Canyon. I mean, I'm sure because your name is all over the facility, they were pretty pleased to meet you in person. Uh, it was. It was. A, I mean, it, it was a, a great, resounding reception. I mean, they they had a little chant going for me. They were all excited. You know, Maddie. I mean, I'm, I'm at the age where I'm talking to kids, and I'm like, they weren't even born when I was playing, so you don't know how much they know about you. But yeah. you know, they had all my highlights teed up. You know, that grainy uh, video. <laughs> but um, they knew I was. You know, the great thing about Grand Canyon right now is uh, they're really recruiting a lot. You know, around the nation and a lot from you know the West Coast, California. So a lot of these kids grew up Angel fans and. You know, whether they, you know, knew who I was when when they were growing up or their parents really knew who I was, uh, you know, they, they have some familiarity with me. So that was good. Is this something I know you live in Scottsdale, so it's nearby, uh, Tim. Good morning. But with Andy Stankiewicz, I don't know if you crisscrossed your career yeah. with him, but now he's at USC. Is this something that Mike Wallace suggested to you or you always kind of found your way over to see the antelopes? Yeah. Well, you know, um, yeah, Stan, I, when, when Andy was over there, you know, I'd come around the program. I, I've, you know, I've spoke, I've done some things before in the past. I've always had a great relationship, relationship with Andy when he was at Grand Canyon. And then when he left, I mean, you know, Greg Wallace got promoted and, uh, you know, he's just trying to carry on the tradition and keep the relationship going. I mean, obviously I knew Andy from our playing days and, you know, had yeah. more of a rapport with him, but it's great to connect with Greg and get to know him. I've been out, you know, I got to the angel, I mean, uh, the, the Canyon, uh, golf tournament alumni golf tournament every year and uh it's just it's just great to go back to your alma mater i mean the the thing about my life right now i mean i'm not coaching high school baseball anymore but the spring has always been super busy with high school or then you know the angels so i don't get a chance once baseball starts to get out there and watch many games kind of follow them and track them in the news and on tv here and there so um it was just great this year to have some time to get out there it, you know everything kind of aligned and i was able to get out there and have a talk with them you know we're so uh, we're, we're so used to talking about you with the angels lifetime angel of course in the angels hall of fame i think what some fans might not know about your career is that you were drafted by the braves and then decided yeah. to go to Grand Canyon. Walk us back to those sure. days in your life and that decision that you made, Tim. Yeah, you know, back in out of high school, I was a big fish in a small pond, basically in Arizona. Um, you know, high school baseball was, you know, not like it was today. And uh, I got drafted by the Braves. I was all all Arizona, all that that, that kind of stuff. But uh, it was funny. Bob Wadsworth was the longtime veteran scout, and he made his pitch. You know, after the Braves drafted me, and I was all excited to sign on the dotted line for fifteen thousand bucks and get my first car and. Afterwards, he took his hat off and he said, do not sign this contract. Go play baseball at Grand Canyon. You need some maturity. You're going to grow. It's a great program, and uh, you'll be much better off in three years. And he was right. I mean, uh, Canyon at the time was NAIA, and, you know, there was no rules. I, I got like three years or probably like five years of experience in the three years I was there just with the amount of playing time on the field and work in the cages and stuff. And uh, it made a difference. I mean, it definitely uh, – you know, set the foundation for the rest of my baseball career. That's a terrific lesson, I think, for a lot of kids that are coming out today. I mean, I think one of the differences too, Tim, and we've talked to college coaches for the last two weeks about this, is that the college game is played at maybe even a higher level than it was five, six years ago because there aren't as many rounds in the major league draft. 
So yeah. kids are staying in. Do you do you buy that? You're around the college game. Mm. I, I totally agree with that. And I've talked to our, our major league scouts and they all say the same thing. It's like, you know, the players biggest years of development are like from 17 to 20. So if you, you know, if you go and play in a program where you're not getting reps and playing time, you're sitting the bench until your junior year, or whatever it is. I mean, you're losing out on your development and um, same thing going you know, you know, into the minor leagues. I mean, there's just not as many opportunities out there. So yeah, if you have a chance to go play college baseball, I always tell my high school kids this, go where you're going to play next year as a freshman, you know, don't go to the big school because it's the big school. And now you're competing against guys and you don't get to play, you know, you're sitting on the bench for two years. You got to go out and play and develop in those, those really key developmental years. So um, yeah, great decision for me. Uh, obviously I didn't make that decision. The, the scout made it for me. But, uh, you know, it's funny. I always look back on that. I mean, I, I, I told you this, Maddie. Um, he gave me an organizational um, roster with the Braves back then. I would have been going to Bradenton. And on that roster were guys like Dave Justice and Blouser and all those key guys that were the core of those Atlanta teams. And you always wonder, like, wow, could I have been part of that, you know, those Braves teams in the mid-90s, you know, that were winning everything. But mm. it all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I'm curious, Tim, because uh... – you had a great career, and I think of uh, your moments. But your first year in the big leagues, you get called up late 92. You go to the postseason and win a World Series, to, and and then that's it as far as postseason. It's like kind of the Dan Marino thing. Um, yeah. Was it something after your first year, your young kid, what, were you 23 when you got called up? Yeah, well, let me back up. I mean, we didn't win the World Series until 02. I mean, I was that was 11 years later. And, that's right. And, that's but, right. I mean, yeah, getting called up in 92, you know, at that period of time, I mean, you know, I'd done everything I could in the minor leagues. It was it was the right time to call it. But 93 was really the year that kind of solidified my career winning the rookie of the year and all that. But all that to say is that we had some really good teams in those early 90s. In 95, we lost the one-game playoff to Seattle. And, you know, you kind of think, you know, hey, we're going to, we'll come back next year. And, and sometimes it doesn't happen. And, you know, you wake up all of a sudden, you know, 10 years into your career and you're like, hey, am I ever going to get the chance? So for me, I had the one opportunity to get to the postseason and we, you know, ran the table and, you know, got to have that success. And, it, you know, it, you know what it's like. I mean, this side of your career, that's what matters right there. That's, I mean, mm. I don't care about my numbers. I don't care about anything else. For the rest of my life, I'm a world champion. And I always tell, Maddie's heard me say this, I laugh. It's like, I never made an all-star team. I'm never going to be in the Major League Hall of Fame. But you know what? I got something a lot of guys don't have, and that's totally. a world Series ring, a world championship experience. So, um, you know, looking at, like, the Angels right now, Mike Trout, I mean, he had the early experience in the postseason, and it's been it's been rough going for him. And you always wonder, is, is he going to get a chance to get back? And he's the guy that, you know, the pressure's on. I mean, I shouldn't say the pressure, but – you know, that career is, you know, it, the time's ticking, you know. He's on the backside of his career kind of in a way, you know, and it's like the Angels got to get get it done for him. I still can't believe that, that you never made an all-star team. I still cannot believe that. That's unbelievable to me. Hey, I want to ask you this, too, because we have some numbers here. The inevitable question came up uh, by our production staff. How did Tim Salmon fare against Al Leiter? Timmy, he wanted nothing to do with you. Seven walks in 16 plate appearances. Hey, you know what? I, I was better off just taking pitches and looking at that cutter inside than trying to swing at it. <laughs> he was going to, you know, what? You know, it's like when you got a good gamer, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm not using my gamer against, against a guy like this. I don't want to yeah. break his bat, you know, but no, yeah, he I, was tough. I mean, Hey, I always say, you know, the guys still cutters now, but back in the day, it was Al Leiter and, and Jim Abbott really were the only lefties that were throwing cutters in on the hands. And you guys were very dominant. Every, all the other lefties were working away and, it was tough sledding against guys like that. You know what? It was true. I, I didn't like facing you. And I, my whole, I was, I, I never relented, right? So if you're going to swing at it, the pitch that I mostly got guys out of was the ball, right? So you got a right hander, he sees it, and he, he gets Jim. But I, I, Anderson was behind you, so I probably yeah. wanted that matchup. Uh, when Chili Davis was there, I know he switch hitter, but that matchup probably made more sense. And uh, he would never swing at it. I wouldn't give it into him. This guy had, how many times did you have 30-plus bombs? Yeah. Three times? Yeah, I yeah. Again, like I said, you know, pick your battles. I mean, I I was always a good. I had good eyes. I mean, I always took you know, worked the count, try to you know. Back, they can't back do that now, Timmy. As good as a hit. <laughs> I, the the way pitching around guys and then getting better matchups, that you'd be out of that'd be out of the game in the fourth sure. inning. Hey, Timmy, thanks yeah. for the visit, man. It's good to see My you. Uh, thanks for sharing some uh, some of your thoughts on the uh, GCU program. We'll be watching this weekend when they take on the men of Troy, and we'll see in Tempe coming up real soon. Hey, looking forward to it, guys. Good to Baseball's see you. Up.
Let's go. Angels Hall of Famer Tim Salmon joining us. Of course us I knew it was 02. Yeah. Yeah.